Okay, so I've just noticed that the eyelet isn't just crushed, it's actually broken. Okay, so just as a disclaimer, this isn't a video supposed to be like, you know, slagging off Vivo Barefoot or saying they're all bad. I think there's a lot of good things that we'll get into, but there's some bad things. And this is the point in the video where I was sort of filming it in real time and I realised that the eyelet was broken, not just crushed. And I did send these uh, these pair back and I did get a full refund. So I can honestly say that Vivo Barefoot's uh, customer service, which used to be not that great, has really massively improved. And I can't really complain about the customer service. It was really good. They did honour the 100 day trial thing. Um, I mean, obviously, clearly you can see there's a fault. This is the second pair of a fault. And it's at this point that, to be honest, I just gave up. I just wanted a refund and I didn't want to bother with this anymore. They clearly have very serious quality control issues. But anyway, for now, we'll carry on with the video. Hello, YouTube. So this is a video about the Vivo Barefoot Magna Trail FG. Bit of a mouthful. Um, this is the latest one that they're selling on the website at the moment, which is a uh, leather, quite a soft like nubuck leather outer and a uh, wool mix, it's not 100% wool I think because it's stretchy, it's got elastic in it but it's got wool on the inside and then leather on the outside so there's been different versions of this but this is the latest one so the brand is Vivo Barefoot they're like, you know, probably top dog when it comes to the barefoot shoes um, it's pretty much like a lightweight hiking shoe trail shoe crossover because it looks decent enough to wear like with a pair of jeans just day to day but it has got decent grip and it's I'd say it's a, a lightweight hiking shoe um, it's not a big stiff you know a big strong boot that I'd go up mountains in but you possibly could go up mountains depending on how rough the terrain is and how accustomed you are to barefoot shoes but basically yeah it's a lightweight hiking shoe hybrid type thing um, these on the Vivo Barefoot website cost have an RRP of I think it's 170 quid or 160 quid. I'll put it up on the screen. And you know, that's a lot of money for a flimsy little barefoot shoe. But what I will say is that when you see them, the everything about them, like the quality, everything's just really nice. So they are kind of the more luxury barefoot shoe brand. And you can always get pretty much always get 20% off. You have you have to find a code but you can quite easily find people's codes for getting money off and then it brings it down to a bit more of a reasonable price and also with Viva Barefoot you get 100 days to try them uh, and you actually can use them in that 100 days what other company does that you know so I think that's a really really brilliant beneficial um, thing to the company itself I won't go into the rest of it because there's so much about Vivo Barefoot. You just look at their website and you you can learn about them, their sustainability and their reusing, re, uh, reselling of older shoes and stuff like that. It's all pretty interesting, pretty cool. It's at this point that I just want to say I still think those things like the company has really good ethics. Um, they're trying to be sustainable. They're doing a lot of positive things. Unfortunately, they still do do have this quality control issue that I think they've had for a long time, to be honest. And I've seen a lot of other videos where people have found problems with them. Um, and they will honour it. They will let you send them back for a replacement or a refund. So it's not a massive issue if you still want to try the brand. Um, it's just my personal experience is that I've kind of given up now. But there's still all these positive things about the brand. So make your own mind up. I do like the brand and what they stand for. The thing that everyone complains about is the price. It is what it is, you know. This you can find cheaper one, cheaper barefoot shoes, but Viva Barefoot have picked their place in the market as the kind of higher end stuff. Now the shape when it comes to barefoot shoes, Viva Barefoot shoes do vary in their shape. I would say these have got a bit more of a shapely toe box than some of their older 
styles. Um, but they are quite shallow in the toes. You can see like there's not a lot of depth there. These aren't too bad actually. If you look at these other ones that have got these uh, gobies, they taper down so much that the last bit of the toe box is unusable. Like it's just too low. And uh, um, Viva Barefoot have have said in their uh, on their website before in the past. I've seen it where they've said there should be space to wiggle your toes. And honestly, in Viva Barefoot shoes, you don't really have space to wiggle your toes. You can spread your toes but because of the depth. You can't really wiggle your toes that well. But I haven't found it to be that uncomfortable. You kind of forget about it, and when you're walking around, because they bend so easily, you kind of forget about it. So the shape is, you know, wide enough for me, wide enough for most people, but if you've got really wide feet, really wide forefoot, you might actually find the, the way that it tapers off here, where the pinky is, you might find that cuts your toes off, or if you've got a longer second toe than big toe, you might not find that they're the best shape for you. You might prefer something else. And another comparison, just shape-wise, um, I'll do a bit more of a comparison later in the video, but you can see that these are a lot more boxy. They go straight across rather than tapering off quite sharpish like the Vivos. In the heel and the rest of it, they're quite quite narrow. They're like normal width. So they're not wide throughout, they're just wide at the front. The insole, I always like to look at the insoles of shoes. This is what you get with it as standard. You get a thermal insole. It's really thin, so it doesn't take away the ground feel much. It's a, a really... Uh, not a very dense foam so you know it squashes down but it's got like if you can see the shiny shiny kind of foil stuff inside it that isolates you from the ground gives you a bit of thermal protection not a hell of a lot I wouldn't go out in the freezing cold snow and stuff like that in them because I do get suffer from cold toes but if you don't then it might not be a problem but they are actually some really nice when it comes to barefoot shoes at least the type of insoles you normally get these are really nice then inside the shoe, you can actually see that there's really nice leather footbed in there. So when you take the insole out, you can wear it without the insole if you want more ground fill or more volume, because you do get a lot more space in them when you take the insole out. So just a general comparison, these are the Vivo Barefoot Gobies, take one of these away. They're the same size, size 7, UK 7, men's 7, or uh, EU 41. I think they're about the same size. In fact, if we take the insole out of this one, this is the old thermal insole, and this is the new thermal insole. I don't think there's much difference. I think the old one is a little bit more pointed and actually has a bit less, less space. I think it tapers off even quicker. But they're pretty much the same thing. These also have leather on the base and sides, so that's a feature of quite a lot of their shoes is that you can take the insole out and use them without the insole and you still have quite a nice base to walk on. But yeah, they're um, both wild hide leather and as you can see this is the everyday kind of sole, good for pavement and stuff and this is the more rugged firm ground sole, FG stands for firm ground. In comparison to the Lems boulder boot you can see again there's much more square boxy kind of toe box going on there better for people with really wide forefoot or you know if you find that your your pinky gets gets crushed by these and as standard the limbs come with again like just a foamy insole but it's not insulated necessarily it feels like maybe a little bit denser foam I find that the Vivos have come up a little bit bigger. To be fair, these are UK men's seven and a half, USA eight and a half, but they do tend to come up a bit small, so it's probably more like a seven, um, which is a U41. And they're a little bit smaller than the Vivos, but because they're so wide at the front, it isn't really an issue. I still have enough space for my toes. Now let's talk about quality. This is a bit of a funny one with Vivo Barefoot because they're very high end materials. The leather is really, really nice, wild hide leather. So it's come from free, rain, free roaming animals 
And I think they're a byproduct of the meat industry anyway, so they're kind of being slaughtered for meat. And then, you know, don't waste the leather, the skin, so they turn it into leather. And then it's got wool, this wool mix, which has got the wool mark symbol on there. When you look at the detail and everything, everything's really nicely done, everything's perfect. They don't feel like some cheap mass produced thing, they're, they're really, really nice. The soles are brilliant, sorry about the mud, I have been out today walking in them and uh, you know just the details like you open that flap there and you can see it says wild hide and it's got proper leather in there the heel counter is is leather like I said it's leather inside the laces are thick and strong metal eyelets so generally you think the quality is really good I do think there's a quality control issue so the first pair that I got of these I could see gaps between the side of the uh, the sole and the uppers straight from the box from brand new for a 170 quid pair of shoes that wasn't very uh, convincing of the you know longevity so I spoke to Viva I sent them a uh, email with photos and I said look you know I want to give these a fair go and I don't think if I use these for a hundred days it's going to be fair because they seem to be already failing out of the box so <clears throat> they say, agreed to send me a new pair, so they told me to send them back. They sent me out a new pair, which they did, and they came, and I was like, yep, these look a lot better. I've checked all the way around the sides, and everything seems much better stuck. However, I've just noticed today that one of the eyelets was, was like, it's a bit more difficult to pull the laces through. It seems to be snagging a bit, and I was wondering why. I couldn't see the issue, and today I've just noticed that the eyelet has actually crushed the others are just flat and this has been dented in and crushed and it's made it more difficult to pull the lace through. So this is the second pair that have a quality control problem. That's straight out of the box though, like that. I don't know how that's happened. If it's happened in the factory, if it was just an eyelet, dodgy eyelet, or what. But it doesn't fill me full of confidence. I can't be bothered to send them back again, so you know I've got a hundred days to try them. And if it is a problem, then obviously they're going back. Um, I would have thought they could probably just replace that eyelet easily, but I'm not going to pay for that because they, they shouldn't be like that straight from the box. So to summarise, Vivo Barefoot, they are what they are. They're the higher priced, higher end of barefoot shoes. They're really nice style-wise. I mean, that's very subjective, but I think most people agree that they're one of the better looking barefoot shoe brands. I went out for a walk with them today and they've performed well on an easy, you know, local walk. I've yet to take them on a proper hike. But they're very, very comfortable. And obviously I'll come back to them when I've used them more. Just to say a bad point of Vivo Barefoot in general, really, it seems like they're having some quality control issues, um, which is an ongoing thing. And there has been a lot of problems with their soles detaching quite prematurely. So... I was surprised but not that surprised to see them out of the box having that problem. It's something they really need to sort out. I've seen another YouTuber have these and he's, his has started to peel away and he was like, oh, it's just kind of the deal here, guys. They're getting better at it. And I'm like, well, yeah, it's no good, you know, getting better at it when you're already selling them for 170 quid. You need to be already better at it before you sell them and, you know, know that you've know that they're being manufactured properly anyway so that's the summary uh, and I'll get back to you when I've used them for I don't know 90 days or something like that yeah about three months and we'll see how they're holding up it's completely snapped like I say I've only gone for a short very easy walk today this was like this before I left the house straight out of the box I noticed that there was a problem I thought it was just dented and crushed I didn't realize that at the back there it's actually cracked so oh well these are going to be going back to vivo barefoot again for the second time vivo sort out your quality control